Hi friends, welcome to today's video. I will be testing out this PBO or PBO, I'm not sure how you say that, <laughs> fantasy paints and these are the prism finish. I believe they have two more, the vitriol and the moon, which I will also be testing out very soon because um, to tell you right off the bat, like always, I was blown away with this. This was unbelievable. Um, it was a new thing for me. <laughs> now these are oil based paints and they're going to require a little bit of steering. So I'm going to be using my palette knife to do the steering and also to, to apply the paint because they're rather fluid. I have a couple of uh, wood panels that I primed and painted with acrylics, some masking tape, some gel medium, paper towels, and then my brush to apply the gel medium. And I'm going to give you some advice. Um, when you work with artist tape um, to do masking, uh, this is how I do it and it works beautifully every time. Um, it gives you a lot of control. You put on the masking tape, you burnish it with your fingers as much as you can, and then you add a layer of gel medium. You can also use clear gesso. That's going to create a barrier so that the paint won't slide underneath the masking tape. And it's also going to guarantee a better ad adhesion into the surface. Okay, so here's a close up. As you can see, the components are separated. That is to be expected because, again, it's an oil based uh, medium. I'm not a big fan of uh, oil based paints because uh, to clean up your tools, you will need to use paint thinner, basically, something like uh, mineral spirits or something. Um, they have a little bit of a smell, but it was not uh, overwhelming. I was fine with it. And uh, for this particular paints, I'm willing to make the exception because um, this is not something that I would use to paint all over a surface. This is something I am interested to use for accents, for adding little accents, little focal points within my artwork. Okay. To apply it, I did it two ways. I um, I just pour it directly from the bottle and also I use the palette knife to create that string like effect that you can see. Now, you can control the shapes in which you apply the paint, which is what I did here with the, with the triangles. What you cannot control is what's going to happen after. As soon as you start pouring, this paint starts to react and it changes a lot. So what you see first, that's some of it may stay the way you apply it, but um, it's most likely to completely change. Um, I was blown away because it changed so many times. <laughs> well, while I was uh, filming and putting the things away, every time I looked at it, it looked different. For this second one, I am doing something that's called um, pouring on a negative space, something like that. <laughs> I try to keep it minimalistic and uh, this time I try to control the paint with using only the palette knife. I applied it the same way, a little bit pouring directly from the bottle and then use the palette knife to do, you know, those small dots to create lines within that uh, thing. that object whatever that thing is it's an abstract uh, i call it a, an alien spaceship <laughs> i don't know it reminds me of some kind of alien um, interdimensional spacecraft <laughs> but it was definitely a lot of fun it was a lot of fun to play with um now they take quite a bit to settle or to cure, I kept saying, I noticed that I kept saying curate, curate. I think that word doesn't exist. <laughs> I do that all the time. They take a little while to cure um, because they're gonna keep reacting and moving. Um, I noticed for a good uh, few hours, three to four hours, um, depending also on how dense you apply them. The thicker you apply them, the longer, of course, it's going to take to settle. So just to be safe for these ones, I waited a day. I just gave it 24 hours. Uh, I finished uh, filming it today. However, I noticed that they're not quite ready to be sealed yet. 
So I skipped that part. I haven't uh, used any sealers. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about that. I guess I'll update once I do it. Um, I am guessing that these paints will work beautifully with um, resin. Uh, with resins. Um, but I have to read some more and find out. I'm pretty sure I can get away with using some kind of uh, spray sealers. Um, you're gonna see now how much they've changed. This is right after I poured. Um, do you see on the uh, on the triangle there? <laughs> it's already creating the cells or those uh, honeycomb uh, shapes. On this one here, all those strings that I poured on top, they sunk into it. But then today, they reappeared. They reemerged. It was it was incredible. Um, I should have done. You know what? I, I should have done a um, a time lapse. So maybe one of these days um, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do some time lapses with this paints because um, I guess it'll be f they will be fine uh, fun <laughs> for that. Now this is today, 24 hours later. I am removing the masking tape. Do you see how crisp those lines are? That's how you control it. Like um, I've I've read a lot online. And everybody said, oh, you cannot control how you apply it. You you have to let it, you know, do its thing. Well, yeah, the paint is gonna do its same thing, but you can definitely control the shapes in which you're going to apply it. So that was the point that I was trying to prove here. And if you use that method with the masking tape and then the gel medium over it, I guarantee you it's gonna work most, if not every time. So yeah, um, first impressions, beautiful uh, paints for creating accents. Um, I'm pretty sure they work beautifully to do jewelry and crafting. I'm gonna explore a little bit more and see what I can come up with. <laughs> so stay tuned. Um, it was a lot of fun. Let me know in the comments if you found today's video interesting. <laughs> to my new subscribers, like always, welcome. I'm very happy to have you. To all of you guys, thank you so, so much. And I will see you on my next one. Bye!